Hello, Mr. Bell. So, what are we doing today? Hello, Year 13. So, today we'll be looking at Required Practical 11. This is chromatography of different common medicines. Okay, so um, give me a brief overview of the procedure. So, the first thing we need to do, we've got lots of different medicines here. And the first thing we need to do is crush the medicines using the pestle and mortar. This is the pestle, and this is the mortar. Okay, and what do we do once we've crushed our samples? So we'll be um, decanting the, um, the grind fine mixture yep. into a weighing boat, as you can see here. I've yep. done a few already. And we get a nice fine powder. Lovely. And we put this, put 0.1 grams of this fine powder yep. and dissolve it into 0.5 centimetres cubed of ethanol, okay. which you can see here. Now, very important, I've labelled each of these beakers to make sure I know which drug is in which beaker. So, for example, para just means paracetamol, ibuc just means ibuprofen, then we've got caffeine, and then here we've got a mixture of aspirin, paracetamol, and caffeine. Okay, lovely. And then what do we do once we've prepared all our samples? So, once we've prepared them all, we're going to get a capillary tube. Yeah. Remember, these capillary tubes are very, very thin and fine with a small opening at the bottom. We'll be dipping this capillary tube into the solution yep. and some of the, um, the solution will be drawn up the capillary tube by a capillary action yep. and then we'll be dotting, spotting a small dot onto the TLC plate okay. and replacing all of our spots on the TLC plate and place it in the beaker with a solution of ethyl acetate as a solvent and we shall see a nice separation of different compounds in each of the different drugs. Okay, wonderful stuff. Right, so um, talk us through the first step then. Yep, so I'm going to show you one of the, the crushings of the drugs and in here I've got a tablet of aspirin. Okay. So I'm going to take my pestle and the first thing I need to do yep. is break the hard outer layer. Okay. So first of all I'm going to crush it. Yeah. Like that. And so I guess here what we're doing is we're, we're breaking the smooth coating definitely. on the outside. And then I'm going to take this. So you're using kind of like a, a, a rotating mm. motion there. So to crush them. Pressing right. it down but also rotating it against the hard um, porcelain shell of the mortar. Okay. And we eventually will get a nice fine powder. It's very important, don't just bang like this. That's not gonna do anything. You need to grind against uh, the mortar. And okay. Pressure. There we go. So we've got a nice fine powder. I didn't Lovely. take that long. No, okay. So turn this nice bonus on so it's ready. Yep. And then to place this, um, this aspirin, this crushed aspirin, into this weighing bowl. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have more control of how much aspirin is actually placed into the beaker later. It's quite hard, as you can see now, to control the um, amount of aspirin. Yeah, we can see that it's quite difficult. It, it, it comes out from all sides. So it's a good idea to get it into the weighing boat first. There we go. So I've got my beaker labelled aspirin. I'm going to okay. place it on the mass balance. Okay. And then I'm going to tear it so I get a zero value for the grams. Lovely, yeah. And then we need 0.1 grams. This is a small, small amount. Okay. So make sure it's all nice and loose so it's easier to place into the beaker. Okay. And we're going to watch out for when 0 0.0 grams appears. Again, this is quite a small value. So it might suddenly change to 0 0.1. 0 0.5 now. There we go. 0 0.11 just says okay. about in the method. So 0 0.11 is okay. Lovely. Okay. So now we're going to take this off the mass balance. Yeah. Take a look at ethanol. Yeah. So now we are going to dissolve this aspirin. Yeah. In 0 0.5 centimeters cubed of ethanol. Using our pipette to place the ethanol in here. Yeah. Put the top on that. We'll swirl it around to make sure the aspirin has dissolved. You'll see that not all of the white powder has dissolved into the ethanol. 
Now, this is because there's other agents and species in the ethanol that might not dissolve in ethanol. For example, Dr. Davis mentioned the smooth coating on the outside of the tablet. We've also got things like stabilizing agents and bulking agents as well. Great. Okay. So let's move that here, making sure that we know what is what. Okay, so we've got the uh, aspirin that you just crushed. So there it is, and then we've got the solution behind it. And then we've got, uh, you said that the first one was a uh, the caffeine mixed with other things, right? Yes, it's with aspirin and paracetamol. So this is kind of like a, an ultra drug. If you're really unwell, it'll give yeah. you a boost because there's caffeine in there, so it'll give you a nice energy buzz. But also the paracetamol and aspirin will also work to alleviate your, your headaches or your fever or your pains. Right, okay, and then we've just got caffeine there, and then we've got ibuprofen and then we've got paracetamol on its own. Okay, wonderful. So, what do we do next? So now we've got our thin layer chromatography plate. Okay. So this is a layer of silica. Yeah. Be very gentle with this because this silica, if you mishandle it, can start to crack and therefore you can't actually run chromatography with it. Okay. So, gently placing that down. Again, not touching the surface because that might affect our results. Yeah. We get a ruler. I'm going to measure one centimeter up from the bottom. Take this here, around one centimeter. Almost in a straight line either end. Good, so it's really important that we use pencil. Very important to use pencil because we don't want any of the ink to also run up the chromosome plates as well. Okay. So now, I'm, what I'm going to do next is make clear which sample is which. Okay. So I'm going to start off at this end, I'm going to put across, and spacing these out as much as possible, so therefore they don't overlap, so we've got one, two, three, four, five sam samples. I've got five crosses on okay. the line. So I'm going to label this, and the first one I'm going to label is A, so this Cross here relates to aspirin, and the next one I'm going to call it A, P, C. Okay. For aspirin, paracetamol, and caffeine. Yeah. Next one is C, just for caffeine. Next one I for ibuprofen, and the last one is paracetamol, so just a P. Okay, so really important there that we know what's what. Yeah, really good tip. And then the next thing we'll do, we'll get our capillary shoot, making sure we get the right end, so this is the open end. Yeah. And we'll gently dip it into our solution. So let's uh, see this happening. So you're dipping the capillary tube in. You can see some of the solution has been taken up by capillary action. Yeah, let's just have a quick look at that. Yeah, okay. Now this is a very important step here, 13. You don't want to have a massive blob on, on your cross. You just want a very small point so therefore we have a nice concentration and hopefully the separation of the spot is clear and we don't just have a massive splodge. Okay. So we're just going to have one spot here, like that. I'm going to put this to the side so I know that's been used already. Okay. Next one we've got a mixture of aspirin, paracetamol and caffeine. Again this has been taken up. Small dot on the line. Like that. Okay. Again, doing stuff like this here, things you need to be in a nice, have a nice method to it. You don't want lots of different things cluttered all around. You want to have a nice system that you're using. Yeah. Not um, a cluttered system. Okay. Let me just go around the other side so we can get a better, different view on this. Ibuprofen now. Let's take up this. One method, uh, one uh, advantage for using this capillary tube to take up the um, solutions is the fact that you only will get the solutions mostly coming up, so you don't get a lot of the solid, which you can see is still in there. You get mostly the solution, not just the solid. Make sure it's the right way around. There we go. Spot. There we go. Okay. So all of our spots are on 
the TLC plates. Okay, wonderful. Now the next thing to do is that we've got our solvent. So this is going to be our, our mobile phase, and this is ethyl acetate. Okay. It's an organic solvent because it's an organic compound. Right. Now, the um, most important thing to do here just back is around. to make sure that we don't fill this beaker too high because we don't want the solvent line initially to be above the line that we've placed our spots. Okay. So let's pour this in. I'm just going to just need a little bit. Maybe a tad more. Just so because it's, ca it's concave at the bottom, so I don't want to have a dry bit in the middle. Yeah. Right, that should be good. So you don't want your solvent to be any more than one centimeter above the base of your beaker, because we don't want it to go above our pencil line. Okay. So now we've got our TLC plate. I'm going to place it into the beaker with the solvent. Okay. And making sure we don't let it slide too far. So we'll do it nice straight up. Place the lid on top, and we're going to wait. I think this should take around 10 to 20 minutes okay. for the solvent to go up. And we want it just once, around one centimeter from the top. We don't want it to run off the TLC plate because then we won't get accurate um, we can RF values at the end. Um, but also the position in the dots might also squeeze up together. Okay, so we've got a lid on top to make sure that the um, solvent vapours stay in our uh, developing chamber. And as Mr. Bell says, we're going to wait for the solvent front to reach one centimetre from the top of our TLC plate. So remind me, what's the solvent? What's our it's mobile phase? Ethyl acetate. So we've got ethyl acetate as our mobile phase. And of course we've got our uh, TLC plate, which is silica, yes. as our stationary phase. Okay, so I guess we'll pick this up once our solvent has reached one centimetre from the top of the plate. Right, so this is our chromatogram year 13. It's labelled at the top with A for aspirin, AE for adenine extra, this is a drug that contains aspirin, caffeine, and paracetamol. C for caffeine, I for ibuprofen, and P for paracetamol. Now I'm going to leave most of the interpretation up to you. My main tip here is to take it piece by piece. Don't just look at this as um, all the information that gives you. Break it down into certain spots and think, do these spots relate to other pieces of information on this chromatogram? However, to get you started, I've noticed two interesting spots. For example, I can see that caffeine is in the drug adenine extra. I can also see that paracetamol is in this drug uh, adenine extra. That's great, and this is what chemists do. They use chromatograms to check to make sure that um, a certain drug or a certain chemical is actually present in commercial drugs and commercial chemicals. Now, have a go, pause the video here. Can you notice any other drugs or any other correlations between the spots? Also, why do you think some of the spots have um, gone further than other spots? And why do you think some spots have dragged and some spots haven't? Good luck, I'll see you back in class.